tired and moody. I can tell her already. I'm a bit tired, a bit moody. Is everybody all right? <laughs> 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 I'm pissed. <laughs> tired, moody, and twattered. You all right? Up, what's up with you? Nothing, I'm all right. Before we started your posture, you were like a little sulking yeah. schoolboy. Moody. I'm a bit tired, like, but I'm all, I'm all right mood-wise. You were moody last week, so it's going round. You're, you're up next. I'm next. Pencil is in week Monday. I'll tell you what's doing my tits in. Like, genuinely, we're not we're not working enough. Are you bored? I'm, like, I'm spending too much time at house. Get a hobby, that. John. Eh? Get a hobby. Weather, golf. Look after yeah, one of my young ones. Like indoors. Eh? Mini, um, miniature railway or something in attic. Hornby. A Hornby <laughs> set. <laughs> no, I, I, I can see your little hat going upstairs. Fat controller. I need weather, I need weather t- fat controller. No need, is there? Oh, no. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. There. Just, uh, I need weather to turn, you know, for golf. Yeah, that's the game changer. We, we, we've established this previously. It's, there's nothing to stop you playing golf if you dress for the occasion. It is when it's got fucking snow on it. Have you not been getting out walking? Not bad knee, Anna. How would you get, do you get buggy around the golf course? Uh, sometimes, but usually walk around the golf course, but then I can't move for the rest of the weekend. Play Thursday mornings and, and I can't move till, well, Saturday night. <laughs> things start loosening up. <laughs> get on the dance floor. <laughs> oh, oh, oh <laughs> Tropicana. McCartford. Who? McCartford this week. Is that Harford with a T? Hartford. <laughs> Silent. Mick Hartford. Yeah. To be fair, like, I don't know, I don't know what I were expecting, but he's not the same as, as what I were expecting. Did you think he'd just be I just growling and I'd probably come in and it like yeah. head butters and that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John, John, all right, John. One for old time's sake. You know what I mean? I'm one of them. Uh, but no, lovely, lovely man. We don't him on it. Doubled up on the hard men. Two in two. Two in two. And uh, no, yeah, really nice guy, Vinny. It's just like how calm he is when he's saying, like, telling stories. He's like, yeah, I won the header and I laid one on him. I want another header and I give him one. <laughs> Stood it's, just, it's, just, it's just like a given, isn't it? Yeah. But I'll I tell you what I have noticed with, uh, obviously, Borley, Mick, and Jason Leo's coming out soon. He like It's just so normal, isn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I think I, I was saying to Chris, like, I think if... Or, no, I was saying to you that if it's a, a younger player and they're talking about laying one on people, you think, oh, maybe a bit of a Thug. dig. Yeah. But because it was of the times and, and everybody was at it, you, you you accept it, don't you? As good good game. Like, did you ever did you ever get one off the ball? Nah, not like a, like a, a right hook off the nah. ball. I, I don't think I had it. Obviously, I, I got a, a little elbow in me in my ribs and stuff, and that was enough to like get your rage and one. Oh yeah, Some, as simple as somebody standing on your foot or something. A, a pinch. Never mind it? a punch in the nose. Yeah, I used to like that one. You know, grab the underarm ears and pull them. Yeah, you always know, cut one of them. And then, ooh. I bet people are wondering as well. Who's got the stronger handshake? And there's only one winner on that front. Yeah, Kevin Ball. Kevin Life Ball. like. Yeah, I know, dro- I know the drops of your knees. Mix hands. Shovels. Unbelievable. We're talking down here. <laughs> yeah. like you one wood. We're talking gladiators, them, them things got gladiators, <laughs> aren't we? Unbelievable. I think I made it obvious that I looked as well. Yeah, they were, they were, they were like cold shovels, weren't they? Yeah, it were, it were actually like the game back then were just full of thugs, like really, weren't it? And not and, and proper players as well. Like you're talking about Gary Pallister, Steve Bruce, players of that ilk. And they're all fucking laying one on him. Sam Allardyce. <laughs> Sam. Big Sam. Yeah, I don't yeah, think he's forgiven Sam. I don't think he's forgiven no, Sam. I, I felt there was something behind the eyes there when he was talking about Sam sharpening his elbow. Yeah. But like these are like proper well known players, aren't they? Respected players in game and and they were like chinning people off the ball and stuff. Brutes. Like the ball's up there. Look at the linesman, Bosch. It was a good trip though, wasn't it? It was. Tell you what, I don't know if you were surprised, Matty, as well. John's choice of sweets when we stopped off at garages. I can't mm. remember what they were, but were they? Tell I mean, me. what would you think? Like a Tony's chocolate bar or something, wouldn't you? Yeah, Yorkie. Fruitellas, Tutti Fruities. Tutti Fruity. <laughs> Jelly Tots. Jelly Tots, it were. Jelly Tots are right up there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Jelly Tots are lovely. Jelly Tots. <laughs> I don't know why that tickled us so much, but <laughs> I didn't say anything at the time. But I thought, do you like a Johnny pick and mix? Madam? Do you like oh, a pick do mix? I. Tell you what, my favourite, the old cables. 
Yeah, yeah, but they're not good for getting a cup, them, are they? Getting what? Getting a cup. Oh, you got to, you got to bend them right round. Right, slow procedure, winding them in the bottom. Well, that's why you put one in the cup, one in your pocket, <laughs> one right in before you buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of pick and mix. I've, 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 I've done, I've been walking in, put them on the scales at 20 quid with before. Do you yeah. go more jelly based or chocolate based? Oh, no, chocolate in. Not Is one it? bit of chocolate. I'm in. a sucker for the chocolate peanuts. And chocolate raisins. See, I like them, but I don't want them melting in, on me on my jelly. Yeah, yeah, they ruin it. In fact, yeah, it's got a bit because when you put your hand in, obviously with the heat of your hand, especially if you're at the pictures on a date, your hand's been somewhere warm, <laughs> isn't it? Somewhere clammy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't like too much sugar either. It's not <laughs> worse. If I can just talk about it's that chocolate. one, it's, it's not worse than a fishy, a fishy chocolate raisin, fishy isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. What, what was your favourite story from Borley? The Peter Reid one. The clicking of the clicking of the studs coming down the top. Exactly. I, I, I can picture obviously, it. Obviously, I played at Grimsby, so I know exactly where he's on about. It is a very small dressing room and a very small uh, gangway into it, isn't it? <laughs> it was the way he described the trophy from Ensley as well. It was a beautiful owl. Heavy, <laughs> heavy. <laughs> So I was in charge of an offensive weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and that and driving to, Bur ready, got out of bed, got dressed, driving to Burnley. To, to see Phil. Stan. Yeah. I bet it was Stan. Well, but, I mean, the, the other good thing is the, the, the honour amongst the hard men. You know, on the field, kick the shit out of each other, shake hands, have a pint, end of game. See, I don't think I could, you know, if somebody's chinned me off the ball, I don't think I could have a pint with him after. They're on the shit list, aren't they? Yeah. I don't think I could have a pint with him nah. after. Are you more of a Steve Walsh? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm obviously not a violent person, but if somebody chins me, I, I'm, I'm not leaving the ground until I've got one back or attempted to. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I told the one about Eagles offering David Unsworth down the tunnel, didn't I, once? Because it's normally like a throwaway thing, like, so you after me. Yeah. But not David Unsworth. Because he, he didn't forget. And he's big ones, he? Yeah. The tunnel was just shaking. I'll tell you who's on my shit list. Not again. again. <laughs> it, 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 too many times now. Luton, you've got again. Gonna get a film in it, Jim. Yeah. I, I, I'm gonna go to Jim at morning. Kindness of my heart. I've got a, a guest pass. Oh, do you wanna come? I put it out there. Went down. Doing my bit. There is a catch him again at corner with his with his phone. <laughs> You've not learned your lesson though, have you from Qatar? Me. We need to put the video up. It was an interesting technique, wasn't it, John? Uh, honestly, he's doing arms, but he's probably doing more back. It's the old the full body tricep dip. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's the too heavy for you. That's why you've got to keep your core switched on. Listen, you need a firm place. Right, and then bit, that's when you're working your out. Your own way. You're and work, then you're working your back. No one. And then we sat down having a bit of breakfast and I'm talking to him saying, yeah, but, you know, uh, unless I change my diet, you know, I can't lose any. And he's just giving me, no, nothing below surface. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes upstairs showing you a bit, have a look at this. <laughs> Rather than giving something back, you know what I mean? Just give a bit back. So think something a bit below surface I, level. I'll be honest with you, right? At the minute, you don't need, like in Qatar, you needed to lose some weight because you were fat, <laughs> right? You were a muffin top, weren't they, in Qatar? Like, awful, an airy muffin top. Right. But a minute, you, you know, I don't think you need to lose anyway. I think you know what you need That's to it. do. You're, you're it's just now. discipline. Yeah, I think you, I'm not. I'm not talking to you away from this situation anymore. <laughs> what did you want from us? Nothing. Like a diet just plan, a bit, or just, 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 just a bit of something back? You know, <laughs> Chris Wicks. <Yeah. laughs> just, just a bit of something back. Like then, I'll do yeah. your program if and you then, want. And but, but giving plenty of uh, tips and hints to John about how shit it was. But remember, in Qatar, we did a workout together, and you. Down tools that's, halfway that would, through. That was just ridiculous. Once bitten, twice shy. Yeah, that was just ridiculous. You're out now, Chris. It's a long way back. But we'll, we'll try and we'll, we'll, imagine, yeah. we'll, we'll try and get the video. The, there was the tricep no, we tip. We won't though, will we? We're not. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that working? What is it's that? Whole body is workout. That? And there's it's, this this one when it's all in one. You want to see me back? I like a bull. <laughs> it's too. It's, it's too heavy. Is that that? <laughs> 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 you, fuckers. you rumbled us on the second one didn't you i just saw him look like you fucker <laughs> i'm glad you uh, it, didn't wet me up to go to gym by the way thanks for that he only had one <laughs> guest pass didn't he oh there's always something in there you've been watching much john of tv 
Uh, not since Happy Valley. No. No, I finished Happy Valley in about six days and then... Not been using your VPN? Uh, not, no, I've not actually. You can get the next series on there. Yeah. What series they've not even Yeah, they've not even made it yet. Oh, fuck hell. He's got Columbia. VPN. He's got like, Columbia. Columbia, they all got big there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Sarah Lancaster's grown a touch. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a gun in an ulster. <laughs> well, okay. no massive thanks to no VPN for sponsoring this episode, as always. If you don't know what the VPN service is, you can bench your location to anywhere in the world and watch the programs that you want to watch. If there's uh, matches abroad, you can get on them. And not just that, the security. That's the, the key selling point. Yeah. Bank details. Passwords, addresses, all under lock and key. Can't be too safe, can you, Chris? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. So, and there's a link in the description. Can you still, sorry to interrupt, can you still get the cheaper streaming services? Stri- cheaper streaming services, yep. Yeah. So, so you're speculating you, to accumulate, really, yeah, aren't yeah. you? You're paying for your streaming services over here, you're getting cheaper with your, with your VPN. Just say you're somewhere else. What have we got? Is it just a heavy discount? Heavy discount. Yeah, link's in the description on the video and the audio. www.novpn.com slash kosh. And you'll get you that heavy, heavy discount. What's it's heavier than them dumbbells you were trying to lift on Monday? Yeah, it's not heavy. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's, it's not even, it's, if, they're, if they're that heavy, it's free and you get a fiver a month from them. <laughs> That's how heavy them dumbbells were. <laughs> Should we get back in then? Yep. yep. So we, I know we mentioned on the Patreon, but Chris fucked up again with a, a name. Probably the, one of the, the biggest guests that most... we've never had on. Billy Whitehouse. <laughs> Let's get him in then. Go, Bob. I messaged uh, Kevin Ball just to let him know that we had we had you on, and his response was, "He is a class bloke. Punched me right in the mouth in a game once. I elbowed him in the head next chance I got, and he went down, but he never stayed there. At the end of the game, he shook my hand, said said thank you. He really enjoyed the game. Sign of a proper man." I've loved him ever since that day. That's very kind of Bully. He's a good friend of mine. Obviously, a Sunderland legend. And I do remember the game, to be honest with you. Do you remember the punch? Uh, yeah, I'll come to that. In a <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Derby. I think it was Derby at uh, Sunderland. Uh, Derby played Sunderland at the baseball ground. And uh, I think Rob Einmarsh was playing. And Rob, uh, God rest his soul, he left one on me, right behind me, he left one on me. First couple of minutes as he used to do in those days. And uh, the first lad I come across was Borley, and I thought, well, I'm going to hear him. So I whacked Borley. Never really caught him properly. Then later on in the game, I run, I run across a boy called Paul Hardiman. And as I'm running across, I'm still, still fuming about uh, being whacked and all that. I just caught him with my elbow and he's gone down and whose mayhem went off and all that, you know. But yeah, I do remember that. And Borley, he's a... He's a He's a proper man, Bully, a proper man, proper captain and uh, a proper son and legend. And uh, it's... Uh, it's strictly the parallels between the two of you. The fact that you, you you both kind of went opposite directions. Him coming from down south to be, be a Sunderland legend and you coming down here, both both similar playing styles. Yeah, a lot say. of irony in that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I came down here, uh, I'm not sure what year it was, maybe 80, 81 and... Uh, Stayed here ever since, really like it down here, family down here. Uh, so, uh, a ball went up there, became a proper legend. I know he's still living up there and uh, still had good connection with the football club, I think. Uh, so now we uh, we keep in touch, to be fair. Were you a proper Sunderland fan growing up? Because did you stick to Hitchhike to games? Is that- yeah, I uh, yeah, right. I was, I played through the school system, went to play for Sunderland boys, uh, played through all the systems and got to a certain age where they never took you on. I about got about 14, 15, and I just packed in playing. I mean, I just packed in playing. It was my dream to play for Sunderland. Then I just went all around the country following Sunderland. Me and my mates used to be in a pub. I used to, used to let me in a pub, in the, a pub called The Prospect, because I used to play for them on a Sunday morning. And uh, I'd go in there on a Friday night, would come out, walk across the road because it was on the main road out of Sunderland and started shaking the games. Got a Notch County, Norwich. Used to travel all over the country, two, two or three of us. 
uh, if you could get two in the car, two would get in the car and leave one, or vice versa. <laughs> you that. always get in. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'd, well, we'd always end up in uh, hotel where we wanted to be. Always ended up with the game. Yeah. And what we used to do, we used to jump on the coaches on the way back. No, so we, we uh, that was my. Then, then after about two years of doing that, someone knocked on my door. A good mate of mine was a manager of a, a club called Lampton Street Boys Club. He knocked on my door. He said, "Mick, do you want to play for Lampton Street Boys?" He said, we'll give you 50p a go. I said, okay then. So I went and played and I started my football career again. I remember that prospect. It was, that, that is a throwback. Prospect. <laughs> oh, Five pound in all you can fight. Uh, you <laughs> <laughs> you probably wouldn't let you in. <laughs> Rough as out. Probably wouldn't let you in. Not <laughs> yeah. with your fucking blonde highlights. Yeah. <laughs> blonde highlights. You had to have a broken nose to get in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't a problem. <laughs> you know on that, because we ask, we ask everybody about Within your generation, you know, who's the hardest player you've played against? And there's three names that come up all the time, in the Bawley, Billy Whitehouse, and yourself. Whitehurst. Um, so yeah. Billy Whitehurst. Yeah. That's what yeah. <laughs> it's fucking like you crap. Said Whitehouse. It's Did fucking I? crap in by yeah. the way, mate. It is, it's crap. You haven't got uh, off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Eh? <laughs> did it um did it does it ever annoy you at all that you know, because you could play a bit as well. Is it, it overshadows? You're always regarded as a an hard man rather than all the goals that you scored. I say it all the time. It's you know we all we all have strengths and weaknesses and that. You know you you got big, strong and lads who are not very brave who could, won't do things. I, I wasn't. Listen, there's always someone out there who's harder than you. I, I totally know that. And uh, and I've, I mean, you never get a face like this by playing one twos on the edge of your own box. <laughs> that's that's the way I look at it. And. Uh, I, w I wasn't hard. I was brave. I'd go in places where other people wouldn't go into. I'd stick my head in there and you get knocks and bruises. But hard, I mean, it's, it's sometimes it works in your favour when, you, when, you, when you, your built. reputation and that helps you away and certain players you play against and they think, oh, fucking hell, mixed splinter there and all that, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it does help you at times, that reputation. But I would say I was more brave than hard. When was it that you end up being a target man and thought I need to use my physique and well I went I went to Lincoln uh, and that after about six months I went there as a midfield player and after about six months Colin Murphy said look we're going to play up front uh, we all know back to goals is a really tough place to play so it took me a long time to develop and all that you know playing back to goal you're the only person who looks the wrong way on the football pitch and it's, it's really hard understanding who's behind you and where everyone is uh, but I got the hang of it quite quickly. My touch was all right. I had a decent touch. Uh, technique was all right. So they, it was down to Colin Murphy, basically, and, and Lincoln City. I don't know about you, Perry, but I was in denial because I was tall, but I used to think I was a bit of a player. At a, at a young, like, say, 15, 16, I used to think, no, I don't want to be a target man. I've got more to offer. But it was Mick McCarthy who used to say, you're fucking six foot four. This is what you need to be yeah, doing. Yeah. This is how yeah. you'll get a career in the game. Use your body. The years proved that you were just a <laughs> fucking <Miracle's> time. <laughs> <Miracle's laughs> <gonna happen. laughs> but you know what? That's exactly it rung a bell. Like I, I never used to think I was a target man until Mick was kicking us up a height and saying, "This is this is the way to go." Oh, it's a, it takes a long time. You hone your skills to be a, to be a centre forward. You know, the, you, you don't mature till a really good age. I think being a centre forward took me a long, long time to to get the hang of it and. You know what the ball and then the ball goes up to you, breaks down, everyone's moaning at you. Fucking get hold of it, will you? We can't get up the pitch and stuff like that. It's it's a tough it's a tough position to play, <clears throat> but uh, obviously you get the rewards by scoring the goals and getting wow. the chances and getting the opportunities and getting all the glory. <laughs> Something else you didn't do yeah. fucking much. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I was talking about myself. <laughs> so do you know when you got in the Lincoln first team? And people are starting to lay one on you. At what point do you think, I'm going to have to start doing this back? Because as a young pup, I'm sure if you get, not bullied, but you'd think, fucking, I can't really do that. Well, there a point where you thought, I need to start fucking chinning, folk. Absolutely, John. There was, a, there, was a, uh, there was an instance against Scunthorpe United in a pre-season friendly. i never forget it. And uh, I made a run across the centre-half, which... And I mean, when you're young, you could run a bit across. And I, uh, I made a run across the centre half, and Bosch. The next thing I, knew, I was, I was woke up. I was on the, I was on the touchline. I woke up. The physio came on. 
And uh, I just come round as the physio got to me. I just come round. He went, Bert Loxley's name was. I never forgot him. Uh, and he went, All right, mate, come on, you're coming off soon. I said, What's the matter? He said, No, nah, I'm all right. I'll, I'm okay. He said, No, nah, no, nah, you're coming off. He said, No, nah, no, nah, off. I said, No, nah, no, nah, I'm all right, Bert. Anyway, they got me up the tunnel in the dressing room, which is down there. I looked in the mirror, my nose was flattened all over the place and all that. And, then, and that was the exact time I thought, Ooh, I need to start looking after myself here. And this is a pre season yeah. game? Yeah, pre season game, yeah. Yeah, I don't know who the centre half was, uh, but that was the that was the first when I thought, "Hello, you got to start looking after yourself here, or you or you'll be in trouble." And does looking after yourself mean getting one in first? Just just being clever and all that. No, no. Listen, you don't go on a football pitch to to really harm someone or yeah. do them damage, but you got to look after yourself. You got to get your body in the right position. You got to be. I mean, you got to stop and come through the back here. You got to get your arms up when you're challenging for balls in the air. You know, the natural thing is to throw your arms in there and you you might throw the old elbow now and again just to just to let them know you're there and things like <laughs> that, you know. So it's just about protecting yourself, really. Yeah. It was always just strictly business for you. As soon as you come off the pitch, game's done. You'll have a pint afterwards. Shake hands. Game's really done, yeah. Uh, I remember we were playing Arsenal out here one day at Kenilworth Road and uh, I rang my best mate who was playing for Watford, uh, Tony Coton. I said, Tony, I said, we've got Arsenal tomorrow. You want to come? He went, I'll leave a couple of tickets on for you. He said, and I said, oh, I said, I'm not sure about that, Mick, and all that, getting into Kenilworth Road and stuff and all. I said, look, playing Arsenal, David O'Leary's playing. He went, is he? I went, oh, I said, I'll come down and watch that then. So he, we, he turned up and all that, you know, and David was a magnificent footballer and all that, you know, but that evening, I don't know what happened and all that, you know, but I, I threw a few elbows and <laughs> knocked him about a little bit and, as you do when you got on top of them and you got the better of them. And I think we beat them 2-0 that night. And uh, after the game, I said to Tony, I'll see you in the bar after the game. So we'll go in the bar. And David O'Leary was in the far corner of the bar. So I've gone in. I went, I said, all right, Dave, how are you? He said, do you want a drink? Do you want a pint? And he looked at me and went, no, nah, I'm all right, Mick. I'm all right, thanks. I said, come and have a drink with us and all that. Come on. So he come over, had a pint and all that, you know. And, and that's the way it was in those days. You know, it was, it was... It was a battle, it was a scrap, and intimidation helped your team in, in, in those days and it was a it was a it was a intimidating place in those days on a football pitch, I believe. Were there anyone were there any times where you thought, right, he's got me here uh, and I've not had a chance to get him back? Next time. Next time we play against him. There's there's the best player I ever played against, and it's probably the strongest and the hardest. Uh I mean, people always ask me the question, who's the best player you played against? And there was, you know, there's lots of them, you know, the, Lin, uh, the uh, Anson Lawrenson and Alvin Martin, Kevin McDonald at, uh, at QPR, uh, lots of really good centre-halves, Gary Pallister, Steve Bruce, all of them good, good players and all that. But the best for me was Paul McGrath, and he did me out here gun proper. And no messing about, just a really quiet, silent one where... Just bosh, the ball's coming down, he, he leaves one, he leaves you, gives you a dead leg and, and out for two or three weeks with dead leg. And he was like, he was like a silent assassin, <laughs> Wond, wonderful footballer, absolutely wonderful footballer. Uh, so no, he, he was, Paul was probably the, the, the best and the hardest player I, I, I ever come across. Did you get him back? I didn't, I didn't get him back. And obviously there's a famous one where Sam did me, Sam Allardyce did me good and proper and he, Cut my lip here, and uh, I was in hospital for about four days with 100 stitches. Sam got me against Birmingham, we were playing Coventry. And I've turned the run over the top, and he's, he's laid one on me, an elbow. And I woke up in hospital and uh, had an operation. And about two years later, we played Huddersfield out here in the FA Cup. And Sam was playing for Huddersfield then, and I did my best to try and get him back. I threw a few elbows and all that, and now he started mounting the referee. Ah, he's, he's, he's trying to get me, he's having a go at me because of what I did to him and all that. Anyway, I've gone bosh and I've hit him and I just saw a little trickle of blood come down there and I thought, oh, that'll do, we'll call it quits. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do. <laughs> that'll do, I'll call it quits. It's actually so, it actually sounds outrageous, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> that'll do, I'll call it, because I said I'll have it, I mean, you get sent off. So, and uh, we'll call it quits. It means I'm getting on well now. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's one, of, one of those things, you know. You mentioned uh, Tony Corton there, and he's best mate, isn't he? Is he Tony's best? my yeah. best friend, yeah. Was there a time when, I don't know if you were playing for Luton and he, while he was at Watford, and you went down to meet him for a pint in a, in a Watford pub? 
Yeah, yeah, I do remember, yeah. There's a, there's a couple of things there with TC about Watford. Uh, we played Wof we were playing Watford on the Saturday and I rang him up the night before. I said, turn to my ass, I'm going to score a goal and I'm going to break your nose. <laughs> so I said to him, yeah. He said, he said, I know. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, <laughs> he By said, the way, is the family all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the missus and all that, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to score a goal and I'm going to break your nose. And we had a laugh and a giggle anyway. I caught him and I cut his eye, cut his eye. And you'll not believe this, I scored a hat trick. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the one about Tony... Uh, <laughs> Tony Tony rang me and uh, he just signed for Watford and the England boys were staying in Luton because he used to fly out to Luton for the international so we went we were in this pub in Hemel Hempstead sit on having a drink and all that and have a few beers and to come to the end of the night and the, the, the barman said the, the landlord said yeah stay over have a couple of beers have a couple of beers so there was about 30 people in the bar so a few of the England boys were there and all that and now so anyway Tony went to the toilet about 20 yards down there and as he turned around there I could see was someone like moving in towards him and trying to stick the nut on him and all like that so he's gone in the toilet he's come back out and one of them's laid a punch on him so I've ran down ran down the end of the bar and me and Tom got stuck into these lads and all like that laid a couple of them out a few punches thrown around and all that anyway I've walked back up to the bar and I said to the barman I said there pint, pint of lager mate and he's pulled those he pulled Pull like, you know the what they use for the kung fu with the nunchucks. The nunchucks. <laughs> is that what it is? He's pulled the nunchucks up and he's gone whack and he's hit me right over the head. Right over the back of the head. I can still feel the scar now. And I've got, whoa. And anyway, so I've run behind the bar and after him, he's run upstairs and all that. <laughs> he's, run up, he's run up the stairs out of the way. And I've I've come back behind the bar, said Town need to go to the hospital. So I went down to the hospital and uh, got stitched up and just went out. So that was that was a night out with TC, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were you offended that you asked for a pint? I've got what? no idea. <laughs> got no idea. I actually, we actually, believe it or not, we actually got the cab from the hospital and went back to that pub to see if that lad we knocked out was all right. <laughs> okay. Can I get a pint of lager, please? Yeah. No, but you can have that. Yeah, he did, <laughs> he did yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> when did you first meet Tony at Birmingham? Tony was goalkeeper for Birmingham, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, he just broke into the team when I signed for Birmingham, yeah. And that, was that your first introduction to top-flight football at Birmingham? It was. I, I went from Newcastle to Bristol City, then to Birmingham. Uh, Ron Saunders was the manager. That was my first uh, introduction to, to, to the top flight, yeah. When you, when you first went in, were you, were you apprehensive like, about the step up in, in standard? <laughs> Uh, it was really weird because I don't. Know, it's really strange how you, you actually get to be signed for Birmingham. I was playing for Bristol City, and uh, we played Aston Villa in the cup, and we we lost one nil. But that was when they were European champions, mm -hmm. Aston Villa. We lost one nil, and Ron Saunders was the manager, and I played really well. Uh, so Ron then went to Birmingham. He became the manager. Then I was his first signing. Yeah, it's intimidating. It's. Uh, I mean, you, you, it is a big step up. Obviously, the, the step ups I believe now is a, a lot wider now, but the step up was still good. I, and but it, I was I went there. And there was a couple of mates of mine who I played with, so, and I knew Alan Kerbisley, I knew Kevin Dillon. Yeah. So I was I was I, the introduction was a lot easier. And and the big thing about me for for playing football was I just wanted to be successful. That's all. I wouldn't worry about the money or how much I got wages wise. I just wanted to be a good player, and uh, I think. What I wanted to do, every club I wanted, I wanted to prove to the players that I was playing with that I was a good player. Cause I, and I was a real, real good trainer. And I loved training. So, and I got off to a real good start the following, on, on the Saturday. We beat Brighton 1-0. I scored. Uh, and we got, I got off to a good start. So that helps the process. Yeah. As you mentioned then about the money, is it right you moved from the Championship, as it is now, to the Premier League on less money? I know when I was at Bristol City and I went to Birmingham, it was more or less the same, more or less the same. With signing on fees at Bristol, it was probably less, yeah. It was all about Wouldn't playing. Wouldn't happen now, would it? On. Pardon? Imagine that happening now, moving, getting a move to the Premier League. I'm getting less than... Yeah. And that's why I never make an agent. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, like you say, you know, when your players will play in the Championship and then move up to the Prem, they say it's not as physical and all that, but with the names that you've spoke about who are in the Premier League, 
it was just a fucking battle still in, in as much in that league as what it would have been in the championship. Yeah, I think the game has changed now. Obviously, the I mean, all all that all that technology now, and I wouldn't I wouldn't say the fitter. I mean, the pitches we had to run up and down on on week in week out weren't great, and you had to be fit, you had to be strong, <clears throat> and you had to be durable. And I, I think I think we were probably more durable footballers, but probably not as more athletic. Mm. What happened at um, Villa Park when you got beat one 0 Can you remember? Oh, for Birmingham, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it kicked off. Uh, we were losing one nil, and, uh, and Noel Blake missed the penalty, and that set things on 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 the off and all that. You know, and it all kicked off. I think Blake he got stuck into Steve McMahon, and and it all kicked off. And Peter Witt was playing, and the Ken McNaught. So I, I'm not sure if Ken or he's come through the back of me, and it all kicked off. The pitch was really wet. The local derby, Villa Birmingham, and. It just carried on in, off into the dressing room and we walked up the stairs and all that and that uh, Colin Gibson, Colin Gibson ran up the stairs and ran in the dressing room and he's, he shouted something at me. So I followed him in the dressing room and I was, I was chasing him around the dressing room. All the Villa boys just sat down. All the Villa <laughs> boys sat down. I'm, I'm chasing them around. It was a bit like Ben Hill and all that. And <laughs> anyway, one of the lads had come out and grabbed me out, grabbed me out of there and all that, you know. It was a lot of pushing and shoving, but yeah, big rivalry in those days. Villa Birmingham, massive, and still is, still is, uh, still is massive. Uh, but there was a real like desire to always want to beat them, and the rivalry was really intense. And uh, I mean, you went out on a Saturday night and bumped into a few of the lads, and there'd be a bit of pushing and shoving and all that, you know. And the players or the yeah, fans? the players, oh. yeah, the players, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down Liberties on a Saturday night in Birmingham. <laughs> I could just imagine, you know, the initial ripples of it. It's going to kick off. I can just imagine a t teammates just seeing it and just put, Mick, you're up. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, just checking your square, is it? Can I swing one? I hope he's not gone for the pace. <laughs> yes, he's here. So by this time at Birmingham, have you got uh, the reputation of being a hard man? Uh, oh, football? That's, that's a good question because I, I don't know when that reputation came in. Uh, I think the question you asked earlier was about when did you start protecting yourself? Mm -hmm. Now, when 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 I got caught by Sam on that day and it more or less finished my career at Birmingham because uh, uh, Big Ron said to me, he said, but I played about three or four weeks later and he, he, he after about two months, he said, he said, Mick, you're not the same player. And I wasn't, I wasn't the same player. I wasn't, I wasn't diving into things and stuff and all that, you know, and he said to me, maybe, maybe we'll let you go. I said, whatever you want to do, Ron, you know, you're, you're the boss and all that, you know, and you... you so I, I eventually left Birmingham because of because of not really looking after myself in terms of the physical side of it and taking that whack was was my was was the end of my career at Birmingham. What you th you think you felt that like you kind of started backing off from that bravery yeah, a little bit? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. So when did that come back again? Uh, well, it, it soon comes back. You know, I mean, the, the I mean, there was always a. There was always a fear of getting whacked in and around the face and on the mouth, and it was always painful. But uh, I would say when it, when I came back to Luton again, again, you had to. There were some really good players there when I came here, real top players at Luton, and uh, again you had to prove yourself. Uh, you know, when I signed for Luton, you're looking at Brian Steen, Mal Donaghy, Steve Foster, Ashley Grimes, Les Seeley. I mean, some young players, Mitchell Thomas, Tim Breaker. David Priest, Gary Parker. I mean, in, in there, there's six or seven international footballers. So you're coming in and you've got to prove yourself again. Yeah. Uh, and that was my process of trying to prove myself again. And if I had to be more physical, then I had to be more physical. How much of a step down was it back then, signing from Birmingham to Luton? That's a tricky question because I believe Luton is, is a bigger club as anyone, uh, in my opinion. What about the leagues then? Were it no, the same, same league? league. Same league. Same, same league. league, yeah. Same league, yeah. Luton are mid-table. Luton was struggling Luton. at the time. Luton was struggling at the time. Uh, I didn't see it as a step down. No way. Our aim was to stay up. Stay up and kick on. And we, we did that. We did We did stay up that season. And uh, But to say it was a step down, I wouldn't say so because I believed at that time, Luton had better players than Birmingham than I was, than I was playing with at Birmingham. Sidestep. You, are you stepping up? Uh, it, it's it, listen. It's, this is this is a club I love, and yeah. I would never, I would never say anything bad about it. Or is it is a bigger club? But no, nah, 
it's 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 a it's a club I, I really cherish and I loved I loved playing for. Uh, I didn't know it was going to turn out the way it did when I signed for Luton, uh, but uh, it did and it worked out really well for me over the years. And it's a, it holds a big place in my heart, Luton Town Football Club. Did you hit the ground running? Uh, the first game was Leicester away. Uh, we drew two each, I scored, uh, and I whacked someone. <laughs> Uh, on that day <laughs> so you've got a brace you've got yeah. a brace yeah so I, I caught someone because in those days you know it was like we played back the front a lot more goalkeepers kick balls forward and I said to Brian Brian was sat next to me I said Brian the first two or three challenges just let, let me deal with that and all that now so the balls come I won ahead and then caught someone and Brian got in on the first one and nearly scored second one I've gone up and I've caught someone and I didn't mean to do it and he's on the floor and just that was a that was a good start for me. <laughs> it's almost like it goes hand time. in hand, and then, then I'm on the header uh, and I caught some. Yeah, <laughs> then I got a late equaliser, and we drew two each up there. So uh, I got off to a decent start. Yeah, obviously seven years as a player overall at the club. I think four of those you were top goal scorer. Mm. Is there anything that you can put your finger on at why Luton for you you settled in so well? We had good players. You know, we we had real good players. We had a style of play. Uh, Pleatley was our manager to begin with and we played quite expansive football. Where does the Luton Watford derby rank? Oh, definitely up there, in my opinion, uh, and especially for the fans. I mean, does it rank with the Sunderland Newcastle? Does it rank with the uh, Man U, Liverpool, Man U, Man City? I'm not sure it's that big, but locally the rivalry is intense and massive and I mean, there's a, there's a, big, uh, there's a big rivalry between the clubs, definitely. 100% and uh, the uh, the bragging rights are always uh, always in the open and desperate for us to win them you know I feel like we need to mention the um, best fridge in the football league best manager's fridge in the football <laughs> league neck oil we are that in the manager's, we are in the manager's office you privileged boys <laughs> in the manager's office and uh, we always say we've got the best selection of beers in, 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 in the league yeah they're right up there. Yeah, they're definitely right up there. And I'm, I, I'll be empty of that fridge by the time. We're going to stop there. Yeah. Yeah. The second race is starting in five minutes as well. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were a, a, a really good trainer. Would you leave it on the lads in training? Not not so much. I mean, I, we... No, not really, no. It was a, a not what Don Goodman said, I'll be honest with no. you. It's not is what that, Don Goodman said. It was a respect in that. <laughs> yeah, 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 a bit of respect. <laughs> No, I, I just think I just think we, we we've all been there. We've all done it. We, we, I, I used to I used to train the way I played. I mean, if I had to make a challenge, I would make a challenge. Uh, and and yeah, we we trained really hard, and I trained with like a nice intensity. And and whichever club I've coached out, whatever I've tried to have that intensity in training. And I, I don't mind someone having a whack and getting a whack and all that, you know. And, taking it not just from me from other people you've got to be brave you're going to take wax I'm not sure it's the same nowadays no can't yeah. imagine it is I can imagine just like you know when the manager's naming the team for the five sides thank fuck I'm on mixed team <laughs> <laughs> I mean thank fuck <laughs> <laughs> which manager got the best out of you and how well I think I think the best way to get the best out of players is by playing them uh, I, I was fortunate enough to uh, send to John earlier I was fortunate enough to, to, I got picked quite regularly and I never really got dropped and all that now. So I, had, I, had, I never really had any running from managers down the years. Uh, but certain managers did get the best out of me. Obviously, Ron Saunders was a big influence in my career when I went to Birmingham. He, he, was, uh, he was brilliant. He was an old-fashioned centre-forward who looked after himself, backed in. You could tell the bruises he had and his nose was broken and... He just give you little details about how to play centre forward and what to do, not what to do, and he starts telling you about the flight of the ball and judging the flight of the ball and the trajectory of the ball coming in from all angles, just just little things like that, you know. And so now he was brilliant for me, Ron Saunders, absolutely brilliant. What were you like before a game in terms of getting up for it? Because that's all that's the same. What did you did you need any gene up or? Because Bolly used to bang, did, he used to yeah. just bang on the wall once. And then that would get him and, and everybody, yeah. the door on it, yeah. The door, yeah. No, no, it's, uh, I, I wasn't a ranter and raving in the dressing room, just nice and calm. And I mean, I like to do certain things before the game, a few press ups and stuff and all that, you know, and 
see little things like that and feel strong and feel solid. Uh, but I wouldn't say I was a ranter and raver, a banger on the door and just geeing all the lads up and trying to encourage them to be to be strong and confident and go out there and enjoy yourself and just have a good day, really. Just hang it up. Hang it up, yeah. Just hang it up <laughs> and, and let me up, do yeah. the rest. <laughs> Stick it in there, yeah. Tunnel intimidation, were you ever a fan of? Yeah, we enjoyed it, especially, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially at Wimbledon, yeah, lots of tunnel intimidation. Uh, I remember we played, uh, this was on the way off, funny enough, I remember we played Blackburn when I was at Wimbledon there. Uh, we had the year Blackburn won the title and we were 4-0 down. And Tim, Tim Sherwood was saying, don't get bored, lads, don't get bored, lads. And I went, fucking, is he all right? So I said to Joan, I said, Joan, you heard him? He went, I've heard him, don't worry about that. <laughs> So on the way off, on the way off, we got stuck in them on the way off and Bosch and all that. And now and it <laughs> that kicked, Jones? kicked off, yeah, with Vin and all that. It all kicked off. It was a big, big hoorah, big fight in the tunnel and all that. Anyway, we eventually get in the dressing room and and Joe's there waiting for us, Joe Kinnear. Great manager, Joe, great man, top bloke and uh, one of the best managers ever, ever, ever played for, albeit it wasn't a long period. So you sit down and we've all been there and Joe's walking up and down the dressing room and for three or four minutes, never says a word. Dressing room silent, and as he's walking along, he's getting loads of strapmans on the back of his shoes and all that, you know, and picking up all kinds of stuff on his shoes. And uh, he's turned to me and he went, he looked at me, he went, how many fucking shots you had today? I went, none, none gaffer. He said, you call yourself centre forward? You call yourself centre forward? I went, I said, yeah, no, and he moved on to the next one. He turned to Vinny, he went, Vinny, you went there. Uh, strong in the tunnel, aren't you? Brave in the tunnel, you aren't you? Hey, you're right in the tunnel when it's kicking off and all like that. What about on the pitch and all like that? So he's nailed, start nailing everyone. And, 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 and he's picked on the biggest one with Vinny as well. You know? So he hasn't, he hasn't gone for the small fry and all like that. So he's picked on the big one. So after about half an hour, he's nailed everyone. He's gone <laughs> around the dressing room. Nailed a lot of them. You go, yeah, well, you're right, and all that. Now. And he's gone, right, Monday morning, Monday morning, here, yeah, there'll, be, there'll be two Spaniards, two Norwegians, and a Frenchman here. You're a lot of fucking useless. Get out. We all walked out, all got changed, got in the show, and all that. And he's got, oh, two Frenchmen and a Norwegian, and all that. You know? Anyway, we got to, got an hour, went in the bar, had a couple of beers, and off you go. Come in Monday morning, straight in the training pitch. You go, gaffer, gaffer. Well, it's those Norwegians and those Frenchmen. He'd go, fuck off, you lot. And all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'd go, fuck off. You. Then, then, and, then, oh, there you go. Oh, you're brilliant. Then start again, week start, next week, win, everything's back to normal. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant manager. Absolutely brilliant. Were you, the, were you going back to Wimbledon? Were you the only player never to do initiation yeah I spoke to Vin I spoke to Vin I said Vin dodge your back and all that make sure they look after me and all that they did get my room they did do my room on the first away trip uh, they turned my room over but they never there's normally something physical and all that I was going to no. say like we've there's had no, singing and yeah, stuff but yeah. Yeah, what was the, a typical initiation oh, the, the, oh, I don't know they'd strip you down and, and put you in the water on the because on the, we used to train in Wimbledon Common there used to be a lake on there and I'd strip you down and throw you in there I said, Down and make sure, make sure they don't strip me off and all that. My back ain't great. <laughs> hey. But they did my went, so you go away on the next trip and they turn your room over and everything, you know. They did Johnny Artin's clothes, they burnt them in uh, they burnt them. Is that what you were saying? Out yeah. the window, yeah, yeah. Oh, all kinds of stuff, yeah. Yeah. I only knew you, you could just ask before I'm not to do it. <laughs> I think uh, back's I think, a bit we, Yeah, can you just not well, strip Vin, me down Vin, a minute? Vin was in back, total back. control. No, little Willie. Jonah was in total control of the dressing room. He he, he was a he was a brilliant captain. Uh, I love playing with him. Really good captain. Uh, good guy, really good guy and a good captain, a massive leader. Did he not get enough credit for how good a footballer he was? Vin was a real good footballer. And I tell you what, he would, uh, every afternoon or after training, it'd be me and him would be out there with the young lads on, on Wimbledon Common, crossing and finishing. And he, he absolutely was passionate about football. He loved it. He trained hard. Technique, absolutely first class. If you, if you put a cross country session or a running session, he'd be at the front. Uh, he'd win all the running. He just struggled a little bit when the ball was at one side of him, where a little bit of mobility, but 
technically he was he was a real real good player. Both boxes, head in, fantastic, brave. Both boxes. If you want him to defend a corner, he'll get his head on it. And over, overall, just a real real good captain. I bet that change room could just manage itself. That Wimbledon one. No, Vinny managed the change room, <laughs> and he wouldn't he wouldn't have anything said about the club. You know, if you if you if you said anything about the club or the crazy gang, or whatever, anything detrimental, he'd, he'd nail you on on the Monday. I've seen him having I've seen him having people pinned up against the wall and all that, you know, about saying things detrimental about the club. I think Warren Barton said something in the in the paper, uh, newspaper, and we were on the way in on the Monday morning. So I'm going to nail him when I get in. I said, "What's he said?" He went, "Read that." He said something detrimental. I don't know what it was. And he had Warren pinned up against the wall. And I'm going, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we were just talking about Wimbledon, when, when they came in for you, was it, obviously they built the reputation of the crazy gang and, and everything by then. Were you just, was it a rub of the hand? like a like, match made in heaven, yeah. didn't it? Oh, it was, it was I mean, I, I hadn't played for, for about nine months. I got injured. I, I did my back at Coventry. And I played one game there. And I, and I hadn't played for nine months. And I was just get back and f- I was just getting back fit. And uh, Vin rang me, he said, oh, Joe's been on. The fridge, we used to call him the fridge. Uh, uh, Joe, that was his nickname, the fridge, you know, the fridge, the old basketball player. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, American uh, football. American football, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was his nickname, the fridge. He said, Mick, the fridge has been on. <laughs> he said, what, what is it? He went, oh, he said, uh, he said uh, he's going to sign Lee... Uh, Lee Chapman. And I said, oh, Lee Chapman. He said, and I told him not to sign him. I told him to sign you. I went, okay, he wants to meet you. I said, okay. So I went and met him in, in Watford, in Hilton. Sat there, we'd had a done deal within, within 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I was a company, same wages, a little bit of signing on fee. W- weren't about the money, as we spoke about earlier. Just signing on fee and in you go and off you go. And it was, it was brilliant. I absolutely loved my time at Wimbledon. Absolutely loved it. So I, I was thankful for Vinny for getting me to Wimbledon because he said, nah, to Joe, sign, sign Mick, down, sign him, sign, sign Mick, he'll, he'll be a better suitor for us and all that now. And who knows, who knows, but I had a great time there. Yet another profitable weekend. Back in the money. Super Sunday I had. Oh, so not on our league. Did we have a league? We did, didn't mm-hmm. we? I think I joined the wrong league. Yeah, you did, John. So you the did, point system is null and void. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a tot up, don't you worry. Massive thanks to Betmate for sponsoring the series once again. Uh, and we're getting right into it, aren't we? Have you not? Me and involved? you are. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm into it. I just, I just got the wrong league. Because we did the prediction. We did the predictions leagues this week and we've got Fantasy League coming up again this week coming. That's my favourite. International, because we'll the... international weekend. I'm even more screwed now. Then, yeah, because international weekends a Crap. bit of a damp squid. Yeah, isn't it? I am screwed. I don't know who plays for Latvia and that. <laughs> well, we've got England, Italy. Oh, I've half a chance with England, England team. Ukraine, is it? Yes. You can pick a maximum of six players from each nation. We've got what interceptions, tackles, cards, goals, tackles, saves. Look. Heavily into tackles. Who's going to make tackles? Fullbacks, centre midfielders. Yeah, definitely with Bazio, Roberto Bazio up front <laughs> with Toto Scalacci. So we've got we've got the link in the description for the Betmate app, and if you put in UTC five, you get a free fiver. So if you're not already involved, you can join for nothing, and it's minimum stakes as well. Into so that's an important thing for us. Yeah, there's a there's leagues just about well. a pound, entries two pound, yeah, but five pound max, up to five pound, and so it's just a bit of fun. It's nothing silly. Got to be 18 and over. Oh, obviously, yeah. And please gamble responsibly. Well, this is this is getting serious now, John. You need to pull your finger out. What they call week. that centre yeah. half? Tall spinner half, half bald head. Terry Butcher. No, you pill it for Italy. Chiellini. That's him. He's in. Guaranteed they'll be booked. Just uh, going back to Luton, obviously, 88, the cup final must have been there. I like your playing career, well, with, with your England caps as well. But special day. I'll just... Uh, Andy Dibbles just messaged saying, top class is Mick, Wembley 88, Luton 3, Arsenal 2. Best ever League Cup final. It was one of the highlights of my career. Uh, it was a really good season, that season we had. And uh, I mean, I'll talk you through it. We, we got to the... There was a centenary tournament on at Wembley, so we played in that uh, that year. <clears throat> so we had one appearance at Wembley and we got knocked out first round against Man United. 
And we got to the semi final of the FA Cup uh, that season. We lost to Wimbledon. We got to the Simod Cup final and we lost 4 1 to Reading. Then we also got to the final of the League Cup. We're a really good, really good cup team, Luton. <laughs> 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 and we got the final of the uh, to the of the league cup against Arsenal. And when we lost at White Hart Lane uh, to Wimbledon, Ray Half was our manager, and he pulled us. He sat us down. and He said, "Look," he said, "You worked so hard. You worked so hard this season to get where you are. Uh, we were already in the cup final." He said, "You just cannot throw it away. You know, you cannot throw it away. You deserve a trophy." And, uh, and those those words still ring in my ear now, and uh, then we we put a concerted effort in to, to 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 try and win that cup final, obviously. And Dibs, who's just texted you, said uh, it was one of the best cup finals ever. I mean, I went off injured on about seventy odd minutes. I did my ankle, broke my ankle, and uh, we were two one down at the time, and we scored two late goals. Steenie, Steenie and Danny Wilson scored two late goals. We were winning one nil. Went to, went to one eight and Dibs Dibs then they scored again to make it two one and Dibs then saved a penalty and made it three one and probably game over uh, and it basically changed the game. Uh, Andy Dibble save he got man of the match deserves his so because that's why uh, I sent the text and yeah, we, 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 we were we were under severe pressure uh, so it was a we tossed a coin between him and Brian Steen who got man of the match because Steen he scored two. And obviously Steeny got that late winner in the 93rd, 94th minute and I think we just about deserved to win that cup final but it was a brilliant game. Did the cup run, all these cup runs affect your league form? Uh, no, no, we, we, that was 88 and we finished the league. I think we finished about halfway up the league. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. I'm not really sure of the uh, position we were in but I, I have that belief about if you, if you keep winning, you just keep playing and yeah. you keep winning and... Winning games is a brilliant, uh, it's a brilliant recipe, you know, then mentality wise and stuff and all that. And that's the year that you got in the England squad. It yeah, is. yeah, yeah. And the bonus of that is obviously, if there is a bonus of breaking your ankle, you can just sit there and people have got to fetch your drinks, haven't they? <laughs> 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 yeah, what, I'll have another one. Yeah, yeah. Ankle yeah, up and that yeah, yeah. ice on. <laughs> How did you get your medal? Did you have to hobble up? I, I, I didn't. I'm, all my, my, my ankle swelled up and I, I was all right. I just didn't feel that bad. Swelled up and uh, it was Tony Adams. The balls come up. He's a clever football. Adams was and all that. Now and uh, good lad Tony. And he's like just gone bosh and he's nudged me and my ankle went. It was just a little jerk of my ankle and I, I couldn't run. So it was uh, just a bit of cute play by Adams. Clever footballers kind of regard yeah, yeah. it differently. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get, clever footballers now getting in a pocket. Yeah. 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 Getting yeah. in and all. Back then it was <laughs> little nudge break his ankle. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was it is. But uh now then uh it was it was a brilliant day obviously and we all ended up in the Savoy. <laughs> Good celebrations. Yeah, yeah. Was that planned? Were you gonna be going to the Savoy anyway? Or was it Yeah, Fuzzy and Fuzzy got on the stage down at down at Savoy and all that uh, all the wives and girlfriends and family were there. It was a brilliant night, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant night, yeah. Back to England call up, was that because it's always you know, in the papers and stuff, you're getting linked with call-ups and what have you. Was it out of the blue for you, or...? Uh, I didn't know I'd get called up. You know, the competition in those days was unbelievable. I mean, the, the centre-forwards that were knocking around then was quite phenomenal. And to break into it, I was really pleased. And I'll never forget the game. It was Birmingham away. We beat them 2 nil. I scored two. And on the Sunday, I got, I got a call saying, you're getting called up. Uh, and... I was, I was in the squad for a long time, but I never really got any games. I was on the bench for about seven, eight, nine games, but I never got called up to play. I remember we played uh, we played Colombia once at Wembley, and they were brilliant, but you knew what the score was going to be. It was either England going to win 1-0 or it would be 0-0. And they don't really score goals. All they want to do is, is, uh, is keep the ball. And I thought, I don't really want to go on there. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the cat that I want. <laughs> I don't really want to go on there. I don't want to be chasing them around and all that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think uh, I think we were winning one nil. It was nil nil, and there was me, Tony Adams, Peter Reid, and it's, it's not true. But Bobby Robson turned around and we ducked down because he didn't want to go on. <laughs> 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 so no, it was. Uh, then I got I got my chance against Israel out in Israel. Clive Allen came off, I went on. 
proudest moment? Oh, that was my, my proudest moment was when we when I made my full debut for England, uh, Denmark, and basically that a win. Or, or he'd, he'd got the bullet, Bobby, you know. And he was a, he was a brilliant man, Bob. Absolutely brilliant. He used to call me Ray all the time. Be, <laughs> You're right, Ray. I said, Bob, my name's Mick. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Not a problem, right?" <laughs> but now, lo- lovely guy, lovely fella, and all that, and, and uh, great coach, great man. And I remember those words he said to me. He said, "We're going to start with you today, Mick." And I went, "Whoa!" And we were all in a circle at uh, Bisham Abbey, and he and he actually picked the most experienced league who played, who'd made the most experienced, who'd played a lot of league uh, games. Because it was uh, and me and David Rowcastle made our debut that night. So uh, we won one nil straight on the phone to the family. Yeah, 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 yeah. TC was at the game. Yeah. So who else was in that? Or the strikers? I can't. Clive Allen. Era. Well, one, one, Clive, Clive, Clive Allen, Gary Lineker, Peter Beasley, Tony Cotty, Mark Aitley, Kerry Dixon. Uh, that was about it, really. But good players. You know, I mean, Beasley's my hero. Sure. Beasley, absolutely pleasure to work with and be on the same pitch with him. He's a legend. Did you make your debut the same day as Gaza? Yeah, you know, I, game? I, yeah, it's really strange that is. I, I, I got substituted in that Denmark game. I came off and Tony Cotty went on. And on that game, Gaza, Gaza made his debut, yeah. Good wingman on the night, I imagine. For, for fun, fun and games. Oh, brilliant. Childish games, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely fellow. And I, I knew Chris as well, Chris Waddle yeah. from playing at Newcastle. So we, like, we, we stuck together, me, Gaza and Waddler. Just, just stayed on the trainer pitch. He could do that in those days. He just stay out on the trainer pitch and train and do whatever you want to do. And and like nowadays, the sports science will drag, uh, drag you in. And so it was really, I mean, it was, it was brilliant times, absolutely brilliant times. Did you realise straight away how good a player you were, Gaza? Well, we were watching. We were in Switzerland, and uh, when you're a player, you don't watch players, do you? Just and and, and Gaza. Had obviously broken into Newcastle team and uh, he hadn't made his debut. Or, or, uh, we hadn't played against them. And we were watching the under 21s the night before we played in Switzerland. And I said to Waddle, I said, Who's that? And Waddle said, Oh, that's Gaza. He said, He'll be with us soon. I went, Well, he went on. Oh, he, he, was, he was outstanding. So he, everyone knew how good he was. You could see how good he was. And uh, the following week, he got, he got called up to the first, first team. And uh, you know, genial and all that now, but still, he's a bit g- genial, absolutely genial. Trained hard in the gym afterwards, sit ups, press ups, in the gym, whatever, whatever you wanted to do, extra work and all that. Now, totally committed, totally devoted to football. Did he come in like a wrecking ball, like he ended up being? No, 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 no. He wasn't. He wasn't like that in, in those days. He was. Uh, he was just a cheeky, jolly lad, you know, and all that, you know, and just. Just a bit mental and all that. And Bobby loved him, absolutely loved him, adored him, you know. Bobby Robson adored him because of his ability and mm. all that. And we, we all knew we, we all knew he was the rising star. Mm. So your proudest moment was your England full debut? Yeah. Second proudest signing for Sunland? <laughs> that is a question, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a proud man when I signed for Sunland. I mean, the, the, my team, my hometown. Was it a bit of closure then? You know, when you said they didn't sign you at a young age, when you signed, were you like, I've waited a long time for Probably that? Probably the wrong time for me to go to Sunderland. I was at Chelsea in 92, uh, and, I, and I, was, I was 31, 32. Probably not at the right age for me to go there, but it was an opportunity I couldn't have turned down, and I, and I, shouldn't, and I, I just had to go and, and experience it, you know, to play for my own town. And the experience of signing for Sunderland was... It was too much to turn down. You know, yeah. Terry Butcher was the manager. The team was struggling in the championship uh, down the bottom of the league and fortunately we stayed up, but I'd, I'd left by the end of the season. I didn't stay that long. My son was involved in an accident down in down south. So uh, he was. my son was about three or four. He was involved in an accident and uh, I said to Terry Butcher, I said, look, I need to be down south uh, in, in this time and fair play to, to him, the club and... And and all the all the uh, the board and all that. Now they they just said, yeah, Mick, you f- you're free to do what you want, really. So they were they were good in that way. That's why I got so much respect for the for the football club and the people there. You know. Would you have played with Butcher? <coughs> uh, England or not? 
Yeah, I played. I played. I played against him a lot. Uh, good player, Terry. Did you get him? Uh, no, he was too. He was, he's, he's a big lad, but yeah. <laughs> he's a big lad, but yeah. He was too cute, but yeah. I know you went to watch Sunderland as a young lad, but were you still, as you carried on playing through your career, did you still go and watch them? I, I, I went as often as I could. If I, if I was in the area, I went to watch them. Yeah, I followed them uh, in London. If they were in London, if I was there, if I could watch them. Uh, did you go to Wembley. I've been to every Wembley appearance uh, apart from 1937. <laughs> I wasn't born. <laughs> every time, every time uh, Sunderland have been at Wembley, I've been to every game. What was Wembley like? You used to go. Was it Andy King? I yeah, me, Andy me, King. Uh, me, Andy King, and uh, my brother-in-law Davy Hall, who God bless them both are not around anymore. Uh, Davy died only a couple of months ago. King he left us about seven years ago. They have come down for the cup final in '92, Liverpool versus Sunderland. And uh, Kingy, who's a real good mate of mine, and when he come into from Everton, he signed from Everton to Luton. George Wood used to look after him. He was a bit of a minder because King was a bit of a nightmare. He was one of those who could cause trouble anywhere, you know, and he'd, he'd cause trouble anywhere. And he needed someone to look after him. And I, I was given that responsibility to look after him. So me, Kingy, and Davy all went into London, watched the football, and we ended up in a pub in Maid of Ale. And it was full of Sunderland fans. The guy who run the pub was from Sunderland, uh, from Farringdon. And uh, they, they run the pub and all that. Went upstairs, had a few beers. My brother-in-law went over to a few lads who we knew who worked on the taxis. My brother-in-law was a taxi driver. So all of a sudden there's a punch-up. And I go, here we go. There's a punch-up over there. So my brother-in-law comes towards me and he's got cuts all over his face and all that now. So we drag him out, drag, get him dragged out. So me and King, get him downstairs, get him down this, like down a double staircase into this lounge opposite. So we're in there and uh, literally five, ten minutes later, about five or ten Sunderland fans, about ten Sunderland fans come running down the stairs into the lounge and start kicking the fuck out of us. So whack, and we were like lion tamers with the chairs. I was like a lion tamer <laughs> with the chair against <laughs> the wall and all that, beating them off and we're getting a good beating. Anyway, I was, on, I was on the floor. The last thing I ever remember, I was on the floor getting booted. Took a boot and took that and took a whack and we eventually, somehow, somehow me, Kingy and Div got outside and uh, got outside. And upstairs, they were all at the windows and there was little balconies up there and they were, and they were all shouting down at us and all that, we're going to kill you, we're going to do this and all that. And, and uh, Divy said to me, he said, so I've shit myself on. <laughs> I said, no, you'll be all right. He said, no, I've shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> right, then, then, I, then I lost it. And I swear I got a turn around and all, all up with the balcony. And, all, and I actually knew some of the lads. I went to school with them. And they were going, oh, we're going to kill you. King, we're going to kill you. Oh, oh we're going gonna, we're gonna to do this. We're going to do that and all that. And I went, you're going to what? And were, I'd lost it then. And King, he's like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I said, no, no, we're not going anywhere. Come on, let's get out of here. And I went, I went, hey, you, any three, any three of you, send your best three down. Any three, and I'll bother who is, send your best three down. I'm looking at someone, I recognise him, and I recognise him. I said, send your best three down. Any fucking three, send them down. King is nudging me, he went, mate. I said, what? He said, make a two. <laughs> <laughs> Did three come down? Uh, no, we just left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know, like, uh, excuse me, like, do you know, like, 250 grand, 450, 350, 300, 250 grand? Is that, like, good money back then, transfer fee-wise? Yeah. You know, your transfer fees, is that, like, relative? It was for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, but obviously, I don't know how much... In 1984, 250 grand away. Was that a good money back then? It, it wasn't top money, but it was, it was I mean, decent money. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't think, uh, for, you're playing for a centre forward who's hopefully going to score your goals. So there's a bit of a premium on it, but not like it is today. Uh, not like the money the banding around today, but uh, it's, uh, it's decent money, especially it was a 450 to Derby from, from Luton. Yeah, that's what it says I think, here. I think that was my top fee I went for, 450 grand. We had loads of people asking about whether you scored an own goal on purpose. <laughs> I did, yeah. 
That's just to appease all the Luton fans. Uh, Sorry, Derby fans. <laughs> just for for some context for, for those no, who don't it know was, you. Uh, it, was, it was a free kick out there again. It was on the plastic pitch and I was playing for Derby then. And I was in that, you know, that hole to put you in the hole where you've got to defend and you're free to head the ball. And I've gone to head and I skimmed off the top of my head and Shields was in goal and Shields couldn't get off the ground at that time, you know. <laughs> he was at that age where he couldn't jump anymore. And it just floated over his head. He was in no man's land and floated over his head. And, and that kept Luton up? That kept Luton up, yeah. That kept Luton up. And, uh, and so you'd been at Luton for six years, gone yeah. to Derby, scored an own goal, kept him up. Kept him up, yeah. And yeah. then went back and they made 125 grand profit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a double edge in the I blame the, the nunchucks. If you didn't have that thing on your head, yeah, maybe, maybe, you'd have yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still there now, Chris. You feel it now, yeah. <laughs> So an easy decision to come back to Luton. An easy decision to come back to Luton. Uh, Sometimes you think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go back to a club or... Yeah, I had a, I had a, I had a passion for the football club. I, I really liked it. I enjoyed my time when I played here. Came back in the 91 season, just before the Premier League started. Unfortunately, we were relegated that season when I came back. Uh and uh, we just couldn't get out of it. The last game of the season, we had to win. Notts County, I think we got beat 2-1 and we got relegated. We haven't been in the Premier League since. Mm. If you remember, do you know when you came back with Derby, what kind of reception did you get? Oh, good. They've all, they've, honestly... <laughs> so they, as that goal went in? They, they, <laughs> <laughs> you're mad <mayor> next year. <laughs> no, the, the fans here are really knowledgeable and all that, you know, and they know if, for instance, when I went to Chelsea uh, and when I went to Derby, you know, they were getting good money and I mean there's an opportunity for a footballer to go and improve himself play for a better team and the fans here have been the fans in my opinion are the best in the country the all the ups and downs they've had and w the way they've been to me over the last few years is like incredible yeah. they've been so they've been brilliant and I, and I can't thank them enough Is it right that you Man United in for you was it at the same point that you re-signed for Luton or was it a different time? I've, I've, I've spoken to Alex Ferguson about this. Obviously, it was in his book that uh, he made an offer to David Plate, who was the manager here, to, to sign me when United were going for the league and he just thought his team needed to go a little bit more direct uh, into, into a target man because of the state of the pitch. And he, he believes, believe it or not, he thought if he'd signed me, he might have won the league. <laughs> <laughs> so that would have been in 92 <laughs> then, when Blackburn won it? Yeah, I think it might have been, yeah. And... Uh, but you don't, in those days, you didn't find out it was manager to manager. Yeah. I mean, if it had been nowadays, I'd have been a Man United player. Have you spoke to Pleats about this? I've spoken to him about it and he's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was up against the wall. I've spoken to Pleats about it, but he, he keeps making excuses about it. Uh, that must have actually pissed you off, eh? It does piss you off a little bit when you, uh, when you feel you've got an opportunity to play for, to play for the, arguably the biggest club in the world and there were... There were on the up at the time and flying and just the opportunity to play for them, you know, would have been magnificent. And to actually think that Sir Alex Ferguson wants to sign you is uh, is, is is brilliant, you know. I'm think I'm I'm thinking he's lucky to be here, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or at least like at least have his teeth. <laughs> you know, I mean very minimum a couple of teeth that uh. when do you think you were at your peak? Probably here, uh Luton. Uh when I was in the England squad. 88. Yeah, 88, around that era. I was scoring, as I said, I didn't realise that, top goal scorer for four, three, four years, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, probably then, yeah, playing good football, enjoying myself. Was there certain referees that you could butter up and get in the rear before games and stuff? Because we mentioned the dark arts that used to go on, off the ball and stuff. Could you, like we used to get called, get told to call them by the first name, you know, just to get on on a good term with them? Yeah, there was, I mean, you, you got to know their names because there wasn't that many referees not on about years ago. And uh, one, one instance I remember playing for Derby and actually playing against Luton. It was the first game of the season. And uh, George Courtney was the referee. George is from the North East. So I thought, all right, George, how are you? All the best today and all that and everything. And, uh, so the ball's gone across to Mel Sage. You remember Mel Sage, the fullback? I've run across as you do as a centre forward. 
left your foot there, he's kicked the bottom of my foot, ball's gone forward, he's rolled around in pain and George Courtney's come running over and I got up, turned around and went, oh, sorry about that, George, he said all right, and he's gone, bosh, red card. I went, George, it's fine, two minutes in the game, red card? He said, what are you doing? All the, all the, uh, all the Derby bench had jumped up, jumped up Roy McFarlane and uh, Arthur Cox and all them, they, they helped get me sent off. And, and I, I went, I said, and you just think and all that, and now you just think, well, He's from the northeast. I thought he might do me a favour. <laughs> give me one. Yeah, yeah, give, give me one. <laughs> uh, give me one, at least give me one. But the funny thing was on the uh, on the night time, I used to ring my mum after every game and all that. I said, Mum, all right, are you okay? She said, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, she said, oh, Michael, she said, he said, see, I thought you scored the first goal of the season when your pitcher come up on grandstand. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but you got sent off. <laughs> You're the first person to get sent off. I said, yeah, I'm really sorry and all that. <laughs> Apologising <laughs> apologizing to, to your mum. To your mother, I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many red cards did you have? You I, I think I had about 11 or 12, yeah. Quite a few, yeah. Some of them stupid, some of them silly. Some of the things you got away with, obviously, you couldn't do it nowadays. Do you think you could play now, though? Pardon? Do you think you could play nowadays? It's a brilliant question, and the, and the answer I'll give you is what Graeme Soon has said. Uh, do you think they could play in our era, the players today? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure they could. I think they struggle with the pitches as much as anything. Pitches, the physicality. Uh, I, I, I think, I think, I think you'd adapt to the to, to nowadays. I mean, it's a, I'm not saying it's a lot easier. It's, it's a lot because of the ball and the, and the, the pitches. The ball moves a lot quicker. Hey, okay? footballers don't move as quick, but it's just the ball moves quicker. Uh, and I think, I think. If you've got good technique, you can hold the ball up, you can get hold of it and you can pass and you've got a little bit of vision and all that. I said, I think you could quite easily adapt it to today's game, yeah. He's brought the defensive forward back, hasn't he? Veghorst, Man United. Oh, not half. He can put a tackle in. It's a main attribute, to be fair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's fucking crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who the fuck Who gets a move from Burnley to Man U, man? Fucking hell. <laughs> Eh? He's only scored one in about Come fucking on. 18 games, hasn't he? <laughs> has to get a fucking spring of Spaniel running about. <laughs> let, you, let, let you talk about him. Uh, yeah. I can't say anything. <laughs> when did you, did you always want to be a coach? Not really, not really, to be honest with you. But I, I was, uh, I've got to thank Joe Kinnear for that. I was, uh, I was coming to the end of my career and I did my Achilles. And uh, I did my Achilles second game before I retired. And Joe said to me, look, there's a job there if you want to do the under-21s, uh, Wimbledon. So Joe gave me the opportunity to do that. And whilst whilst I was coaching the under-21s at Wimbledon, I just got all my badges and stuff and all that. And I, so it, it was brilliant for me. That club was brilliant for me. They, they, they got me got me onto the coaching ladder. And I got a lot, Joe, a lot to thank for Joe Kinnear. Were you 38 when you finished at Wimbledon? I was 38 and, and a bit, yeah. Yeah, I was getting on a bit, yeah. And you, that was your... Lo- so you retired in the Premier League. You scored your yeah. last goal as a 38-year-old in the yeah. Premier League. Yeah. That's, there's not many, not many done that. Um, were you doing your badges whilst you were still playing, or no, not really? Did you just I, start? I, I'd start when I, when, I got <laughs> when your involved, Achilles went. When 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 my, when my Achilles went, and I, I needed an operation, and I just said, nah, "Not at, not a 38." I don't need not race at 38. You didn't do your Achilles stamping on all Watford players, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. I could have done quite easily. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen the video? Yeah. Nah. They score, they're all doing a celebration on the back. Mick just plays through. <laughs> Straight through the middle, stomping on them all. I thought, I thought that would be the first question you asked. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I didn't know anything about yeah. that. Oh, you need to have a look at that one, yes. <laughs> That's why the Luton fans uh, love me, for that reason only, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make a beeline for it? or? Tell you what it was, it was an FA Cup uh, game against Watford. I was playing for Wimbledon. And Tommy Mooney, as I'm right behind him, I'm right behind Tommy, and he's hit this ball right in the top corner. And I'm right behind him, I go, oh, that's going in. So as I've, as, and that's going right in the top corner. As, I, as I've turned round, they've about eight of them have slid in front of me and started doing like the, the dead hand thing, you know, the, in the arm, and I just fucking walked straight through them. <laughs> they were in my path and all that. And that's, why, should, why should I go around there? And I was just walking back to the centre spot and I trampled all over them. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's worth it's worth looking at. 
Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, like anybody else all the ants. Oh, yeah. They get squashed the ants. <laughs> like anybody else, people are getting up and having a bash. Yeah, yeah. But, you see some of them like, what's that? And then they look up, see me and carry on. I bet that felt stupid, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Just like that. Yeah. 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 What do we look like? Especially with the six studs <laughs> in the chest. <laughs> did you get booked for that? Uh, no, no I, I can't remember. But I, don't, I don't think I did. <laughs> that was uh, that was fun, that was, to be fair. <laughs> so were you, were you ready for finishing then, or would you have carried on? Do you think? I, I was ready. I was ready to go. And I, honestly, Joe, uh, Joe and the football club, Wimbledon Football Club, were, were brilliant to me and give me that opportunity. Was and it you, just a natural thing to, you know, when you started coaching and stuff, to come try and come back to Luton? No, not really. Not not at all. No, 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 not at all. It was a case of uh, Joe. Joe obviously had his heart attack, uh, and he, he he then retired. Took a, took a while out, and uh, he then got the job at Luton. And Joe invited me to come back to be assistant manager. At a brilliant time, uh, the club had just got relegated, and we got them promoted straight away back into League One. <clears throat> and uh, it was it was on the up, and uh, all of a sudden, this, the, the the club changed hands. Uh, we just got promoted. A guy called Gurney came in and got rid of us and just booted us out. And there was all uproar here and everything. And, Carnage, and uh, Joe, 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 and me, we offered our jobs back. Uh, we got sacked by uh, mail, which is really strange. We offered our jobs back, which we never took, and that's when Mike Newell came in and did a brilliant job, and he, Mike got them promoted to the championship. That's the that's when our that's that's when Wheeler played against them, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that's, when, and... that's when Stevie Howard, Nico, uh, Paul Underwood, uh, Steve Robinson. Marlon Beresford, Rome Vine, uh, and Carl Griffiths, Matty Taylor, mm, good that... good team, Matty Spring, good team. Was it a difficult time, obviously, when there was the points deductions, looking at administration, and but being brought in at the helm to see what had happened to your you know your club at the end of the day that you it had was... such affection for? Oh, it was it was a nightmare. And I mean, and it was it was cruel, really, and. I mean, are we still paying the price for it? No, not really. I think the experience has been brilliant. Brilliant for us as a football club, actually going into the conference and coming back and where we are now, how we've, how we've achieved and how we've built ourselves as a football club. Uh, we, we, now, we now think that punishment was, a, was, was a good for us to go into the conference and, and, and find out what it was all about. I came back when they were, when they were in League One and... They got points deducted then, then went to League Two, then got 30 points deducted, which was practically impossible to keep How, them how up. would you get the lads up, up for, you know, the lads have well, signed, you've got a 30-point deduction, well, and it's that, like, right, lads, roll your sleeves up. Well, that's a really good question, because we needed a big squad and we had to bring a load of players in and all that, and, they, and the only way you could bring the, club, the, the players in was telling them about this football club and what it's all about. I mean, people go, I ain't paying, they've got 30 points, they're guaranteed to get relegated, they'll be bottom of the league all season. You've got to win, you got to win 15 games to get near getting off the table. Off the bottom <laughs> you're of the taking table. that relegation clause in <clears throat> your contract, yeah, yeah. aren't you, when you're yeah, 30 yeah. points yeah. down? So it was, the, the, big, the big pull was the football club, not the position we're in, it was actually the football club. And you had, you had to sell the club to them and where we were going, what our vision was. And our, our vision was great because by then, uh, the new owners now, 2020, who are, who are absolutely brilliant. They've got, uh, they're all all fans, uh, very smart, intelligent, bright lads, all fans who run this football club now. And uh, that's what we had to sell to the players. And the players came and bought into it. And is that the year you got the Football League trophy as well? That year, in the relegation year. We got relegated to, to the conference, but we won the. the uh, it was then the Johnson Pay Trophy, which yeah. is the Football League trophy. Yeah. We beat uh, Scunthorpe in the final. What type of manager were you? Uh, different to probably what people think. I like to communicate with players, sit down with them, chat to them. I mean, that's, uh, I like them to be happy. I like them to be have fun. I like them to work hard. Uh, but the biggest thing that I didn't, I couldn't handle was when they didn't train properly. They didn't train properly. I just think, well, if you don't train properly, you ain't going to train. You ain't going to play properly. So those who didn't train properly didn't play. Discipline, heavy on the discipline. Yeah, yeah loved. Uh, you've got to have discipline. I think you've got to have discipline. You can't improve. You can't get better if you haven't got discipline. You can't. You can't uh, progress 
I think without discipline, you, you, you're nothing, you know. What you, kind you, of disciplinary action are you taking when your goalkeeper rings you and tells you he's been out for a few drinks with your star striker and... Oh, you're not going to believe it, but but Steve's been hit with a nunchuck. He's got he's got six, he's on for ten stitches in hospital. No, well, you don't tell anyone that. One, you? You, keep, you, keep, you keep that a secret, you know. I banged it on the door. For yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you train in martial arts, by the way? <laughs> no, no. I did a bit of boxing when I was a kid down at Lampton Street. So I was uh, had a few fights as a, as a junior, but not 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 martial arts. Yeah, that after you from? Casey. Oh. K oh yeah, Casey, yeah, yeah, Casey, yeah. Yeah. What was that boy. was that in London? What a boy he was, Casey, yeah. This yeah, is we, the MK Dons, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Casey, yeah. Great lad. We were out in London uh, on a on a Christmas night out. Uh would you go with the lads? Oh me it was me righty, me and right Ian Wright, because Wrighty was working there as well. And we had a night out, I forget what the pub was called, we we're in this bar, and it was a beautiful bar, we were having a few drinks. And uh, there was a couple of three or four lads in the room with us, and and few we had a few Scots lads, and they start singing a few uh, few songs, man, a few rebel songs, I think, and all that. You know, and they uh, these three or four lads took umbrage to it, so there was a bit of an uffle and a scuffle and a pushing and all that. You know, then a few of them got kicked out, but these three lads, four lads, stayed in the room. So me and Casey are stood at the bar having a drink, and Casey. Stupid as he is, jumped over the bar, grabbed a bottle of wine and got it. And I went, what are you doing? What are you doing? He said, no, no, we'll be all right. And I said, I don't want to drink. I said, I had a pint there. So he's got a bottle of red wine and the barman's come. He's going, where did you get that wine from? He said, and he said you've been jumping over the bar. So Casey just, just anyway, he gave in. Anyway, these three lads start kicking off. And they looked at me across the end of gun. And Casey said, uh, I said, oh, we're in a bit of trouble here. We're in a bit of trouble. So uh, I said, I took my coat off <laughs> and I put I put my paint on the bar. I said, just watch me back, Casey, will you? <laughs> and what yeah. age are you here? Yeah? I must have been about, oh, well, uh, <clears throat> about 50, 48, 50, yeah. Oh, so you're still in half Yeah, yeah I was in half decent shape. <laughs> I was big then. I was, I was a bit heavier then and uh, I, I, I had a bit of weight on me. So I've took a run. I've took a run at them. And I've gone and I've took off and I've caught them like Eric Cantor and I've caught one of them round the neck. <laughs> so I've hit him and as as I've hit him, all the boys have piled in. So then it's all gone quiet. We got out and that, that was it. That was the end of it, really. You never heard anything more. Then about three or four days later, the police turned up at the trainer ground at, at MK. Turned up at the trainer ground and they got me in the office and all that. And now, and uh, cut a long story short, I was in with the police and they said uh, I had a meeting with a admin at the football club then I'd meet with the police so tell us your story so, so I told him the story where he jumped over the bar because it was on camera he did that I told him stop then someone did that to me I put my pine down took my coat off and I walked over just to have, have a chat with him so he said yeah carry on and I walked over had a chat and all of a sudden all the lads jumped in so I said oh, I hope we get away with that so as we as we were chatting they had it on camera so I'd got the camera out and he said, have a look at this then. So he, he looked, he saw me this, he saw me take my coat off, saw me walk across. And then just as I took off, someone took a picture. Someone in, in, the, in the bar took a picture. So there was a big flash <laughs> and he never saw me took off. He never saw me take off. But someone's so, got a picture of you. So there's, there's never, they never saw me take off. So I, was, I, was, I went, oh, it looks like I'm away with it. <laughs> shame, I, went, I went, there's a shame, yeah. I said, it looks like I'm away with this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we 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 just sat and got out and went to another bar. I've never been back to that bar since. <laughs> oh fuck oh, yeah. dear! Uh, we got we had a few uh, a few messages. I didn't get that with the martial arts. I I, I was a bit slow there. <laughs> I was, a bit, I was a bit slow there, yeah. What about the Kung Fu kid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, it might mean nothing, nothing this, but uh, we got a message saying, ask about Tommy Young. Tommy Young is a guy, when I, when I was following Sunderland uh, and packed in football, Tommy Young is the guy who knocked on my door and uh, got me back in the football. What's been the best dressing room slash tunnel tear up you've had? Where you thought, where you've, you've, you've got him back in the dressing room, you've wiped your blood, you've 
dusted your knuckles off and thought, <laughs> fuck me, that were class. <laughs> <laughs> None trucks back in, man. <laughs> the, uh, I've never been in a fight one-to-one in the dressing room or in the tunnel, but I remember we played, I forget who we were playing, but I was at Wimbledon, and uh, Jonah had this thing, Jonah Vinny, I call him Jonah, Jonah had this thing where if he'd had a poo with him, he'd start, he'd start off, you know, he'd kick off and he'd start picking on people just to cover himself up a little bit. <laughs> or the teammates, or...? His teammates, yeah, yeah. And he started on uh, he started on a few of us and all that, you know, and, it, it, hey, it's it's second nature. We loved it, and we 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 didn't mind what he said because he's our captain, he's our leader, and more times than often than not, he was, he's, he, he was he was on top form and he was always always putting a good performance. But some days he'd kick off and all that, you know, and this one day, I forget who we playing, but he started on Marcus Gale. Marcus Scale just gone bosh, and he's caught him right in the chin. This was at half time. He's gone <laughs> bosh, right in the chin and all that. And so I've jumped up, I've jumped up, and I've got on top of uh, Gailey's back. So I'm on his back, and he's swinging me. I've got him round the neck and all that, and Jonah's throwing punches, and Gailey's trying to get me off his back, and he's he's swinging me all around the dressing room and all that, you know, and everything like that. So that, that's, that's probably the the most dangerous position I've ever been in terms of <laughs> in terms of those two kicking off because they mean uh, that oh, would have been Gale would have been uh, glad, that it? would have been a quite handy fight and all that you know and uh, I'd have put my money on Jano mind you but <laughs> <laughs> so like uh, when this is kicking off at half time is Joe Kinnear just sat in the corner like crack on lads yeah just let it all settle down you know just let it, he, he's, he'd seen it all before and it, it it happened a lot to Wimbledon in terms of like scrapping and pushing and shoving and little fucking useless shit today. And I, you got out in the open and that's the way it was. And that, you, you were the better for it, you know. Was everybody fine on the Monday morning? Everything, everything, everything was fine. And, uh, listen, there's, there's a few people who didn't like each other at Wimbledon in terms of what it stood for. Some people loved what it stood for. Some people didn't like what it stood for. Yeah. Did anybody at Wimbledon But behind, think- behind the scenes, sorry to interrupt, behind the scenes at Wimbledon, it was really, really well... Uh, old cog and all that, you know, the, the preparation, the coaching. You, know, you don't have the likes of Don Owen, Ray Arford there and Terry Burton and people like that if it's not a well-oiled machine mm. behind the scenes. You know, it's a bit of a facade in front of it, but behind it, it was it was like clockwork, you know. And did anybody think, I'm, I'm actually too good to, like, I'm too good to get tarnished with the Wimbledon brush? The crazy gang brush? That's a good question, and there was a few who thought that, yeah. Who didn't like who didn't like it, who didn't really buy into it, but they were part of the team, uh, and and they they had to go with it, you know. And Sam Sam Man was a big part of it, you know. Sam had come down the training ground and he he'd he'd be he'd be giving you fifty quid or whatever. He, he'd go in goal and he'd take a penalty at you if, <laughs> if you if you save it, you get fifty quid, and it was it was just just brilliant. And when he'd come down there with. He, he get tortured down there at times, you know. Did he not get picked on? No, he did get picked on. Yeah, we <laughs> we throw, throw him in the water and everything, you know. We throw him in the bath and everything, yeah. But now this is the chairman, Chris. Yeah, yeah. No, good. He, he absolutely loved it. He he loved being part of it, you know. Absolutely loved being part of it. We wanted to obviously talk about you work with prostate cancer UK. Obviously, you 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 had your own diagnosis a couple of years ago. Um, and you're still currently going under, undergoing treatment. Yeah, obviously been a a tough period. I imagine. It. Have you found a lot of support within the football community? Because I imagine it's a period where you could find isolation. Yeah, you do. You do go to ground a lot of the times, you know. And you do. You do go to ground and tucked away times and that, you know, and feel a bit sorry for yourself. But uh, I was diagnosed. Two years ago now, 2020. The question you asked did the support from from the football club and the football supporters and the whole of Luton has been absolutely phenomenal, and I, and I just cannot cannot thank them enough. The support they've given me and what they've done for me, and I just I'm in awe of what what the the, the support I've had and and world and worldwide, countrywide. I mean, I've had lots of support from all different kinds of people, and uh, I just just like to thank everyone basically. But the uh, you know, the fans here, when when I was undergoing treatment and when I wasn't here, uh, every game at home and away sang my name, you know, and it was like so emotional. And I went to a game when I wasn't really going to go to a game and I went to Forest away last season. 
and I'd never heard of it. I never heard it. And I started singing my name and he got, whoa, what's going on here? And it's so emotional and I just I just like to thank them for for all they've done for me, you know. And there is the fortune as well, haven't there? The club and the, the yeah, fans, yeah, is yeah. 30 grand. 30 yeah, they raised a lot of money with Prostate FC and stuff and that, you know. And they, every, everyone's, I mean, they're just, they're just supporting me and and the challenges that they're going through to raise money for prostate cancer is amazing. And the Prostate Cancer UK have been brilliant. And, you know, they set up a new arm now in Prostate FC, which is which gives the gives you the opportunity to, to do events for prostatecancer.uk and, and, and just raise awareness, which which was been my aim since I was diagnosed. I mean, we did the Barnes at Amsterdam, didn't we? Football yeah. at Amsterdam and... It's inspirational, isn't it? Meeting the people that were on the trip, <coughs> telling the stories. Story, yeah. And, and I know Jeff Stelling's doing the the walk that's up, that's coming up. I think is it from Wickham, maybe twenty six. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you, the, everyone has a different story, and every story is different. No one is the same. It's it's unbelievable, and uh, you, you, the the journey you go through is 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 tough, but it's sometimes it's really in interesting and sometimes inspirational, you know, the people you meet in the hospital and who've gone through the same as you and the, a lot of people are a lot worse than you and mm. it's inspirational and it gives you inspiration from them, you know. Support as well, I imagine. Support you know, we talk about We've talked a lot about men talking in terms of mental health as well, but people that are going through this, uh, have been through, like you said, maybe going through things that are worse, Is that does that galvanise that support being... I met a guy in hospital there. It's really strange. I met a guy in hospital, and I can't remember his first name, but his surname was Berry. And we've got chatting and all that, you know, and I said, you're not from round here. He said, oh, no, I was born in Manchester. I said, well, why is he living in Manchester, Birmingham? He said, oh, my father was a footballer. I went, oh, was he? I said, uh, I said that's interesting. And uh, I said, what was his name? I said, his name was Johnny Berry. I said, Johnny Berry? I said, uh, what years did he play in? He said he played in... Uh, 50s, 60s, and early 70s. I said, oh, I said, who do you play for? He said, he played for Birmingham, Man United, and he played for England. I went, England? He went, yeah, England and all that, you know? So I went, wow. And I said, I cannot remember his name. And he went, fucking exactly, he said. No one remembers Johnny Berry. That's what he said to me. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, no one remembers Johnny Berry. I said, I'm really sorry, I apologise and all that. <coughs> now. But I'm sorry about that. He said, that, that's why I'm writing a book. I said, oh, I should have written written a book about my father. I said, oh, okay, I'd love to get that. I said, is that on Amazon? He went, no, I'll bring you one in tomorrow. So he had to go then in for his treatment. He went in for his treatment. So I saw him the next day. That's your book, Mick. I said, oh, that's brilliant. I never told him I was a footballer. And uh, we got chatting again and all that and start chatting. And the next day he goes in for, oh, I go for my treatment. Next day, come out, uh, I've started reading the book really good and all that, you know. And he said to me, what do you do? I said, oh, well, believe it or not, he said, I'm an ex-footballer. And he said, what's your name? I told him, he went, oh, I remember that name. I said, I remember that name. We got chatting again and all that, you know. And the bizarre thing was, I don't know what it is, it just stuck in my mind that, uh, yeah, you can meet anyone down there and everyone's got a lovely story. Mm. And I said to him, I said, uh, I said, what happened to your father? He said, well, after the Munich air disaster, I said, you what? He said, after the Munich air disaster, he retired. I said, what, your father's in the Munich air disaster? He went, yeah. He said, and that's why I had to write the book, because no one remembers him. I said, we go back to Man U for, you know, the the, the get-togethers for the, for the remembrance days and all that. And he said, no one, no one ever knows who Johnny Berry is, which is really strange and all that. So you made some really interesting mm. people on your journey and all that, you know, people who are really timid down there. I met a Scotsman down there who you think's got to be strong and tough and all that now, but phew, he was in the right mess and all that. Just have a chat with him and you just relate each other's story and mm. calm each other down. It's really, really overwhelming the times the people you meet down there, you know. And how are you now? I'm, I'm, on the, I'm in the middle of hormone therapy, which is six monthly injections, monthly uh, visits to the hospital for the PSA test, which tells you where you are in terms of in terms of your numbers. My numbers are really good at the moment. Uh, I'm right in, right in a good place at the moment. So hopefully in nine months' time when I come off all the medication, <clears throat> I might get the all clear. Brilliant. 
were there were there any signs uh, leading up to your diagnosis? Because obviously, <clears throat> you know, we, we don't talk enough about being a be checking and it, it. You know, there's there's uh, things online that I think they take thirty seconds to go through the symptoms, yeah. and be able to realise the, the risks that you're at and and the symptoms that are there. A year before, a year before, I was in a position where the symptoms are: you go to the toilet, you have a wee and it's slow, and you come back out, and you go back again. So you battles and forwards to the toilet two or three times, where before you didn't need to visit once. Mm. In the night time, you're up two and three times a night. They sleep deprivation's terrible and all that. So, I mean, I'm up three or four times a night still. Uh, so that's that's big symptoms. And I went, my PSA was, was risen to about six or seven when my first ever went there, and that was four years ago. And I was told you've got some inflammation, but you haven't got cancer. And a year later, my PSA went up to about 48, 50, which is very high. So they know there's something going on there, and then they get straight back in. And so I'd, I'd had a bit of a scare early on. Yeah. Uh, then they missed, they basically missed something before before they found it. Did you recognise that that was a symptom pretty early though? You know, when yeah. you're sitting, you're getting up for a piss all the time, and yeah. things were happening. Did you recognise that and seek help for it? Or did you leave it and... You don't want to know, really, sometimes yeah. and all that, you know. And I was due a PSA test and I left it. I left it about a month. And initially, and eventually I just went and got it done. Mm. And they got me straight in. Within within 24 hours I was in. It was unbelievable how quick the ball get him in. And yeah. Because so, that's good to know. Yeah. Just that, like you said, yeah. so it's all of the people yeah. listening and watching. And I'm really happy with my... Uh, my consultants really pleased with them at UCLH. They're brilliant, and they've uh, got a really good team behind me. And I'm really, really chuffed with it, with the the uh, treatment and the support I've had from them. You know, really good. I know it's it's Wembley to uh, Wickham that Jeff Stelling's doing the walk, twenty six point two miles. Wickham to, Wickham to Wembley, isn't it? Yeah. So I think we're going to put the link in the description if anybody wants to make a donation. We'll also put the link in there for for all the. Um, kind of signs and <clears throat> ways that you can yeah. check yourself, which is important, isn't it? Certainly is. Have you, have you settled down now with, you, with them nights out? No more nunchucks and bottles and whatnot? What's, what's your tip, what, 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 is, what, what is a typical night out? In London. In London. Oh, yeah. What, in the, as a, a footballer's night out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget <laughs> now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's go yeah. back. Uh, uh, well, there was two lads... Stood at the Franz car, yeah, when these two patterns come walking in. So one of the lads said to the Franz, to the, to the patter, do you fancy Nigel Spink? And she said, I'd love a Nigel Spink. So they went back to the Franz car and he ordered two bottles of Mickey Mills. So two bottles of Mickey Mills and he turned around to the patterns and he went, he said, oh, you've got a lovely Jimmy Case. He said, but you're a bit Alan Paul, aren't you? And she said, yeah, it's the Mark Hughes I'm wearing. So his mate said, listen, I'm just fucking off to the... John Fashionu from Atletis. So his mate fucked off to John Fashionu from Atletis. He turned around to Pat Hood, he said, uh, he said, do you fancy coming back to John Pratt for a cup of Bill Roffey? He said, I'd love to come back to John Pratt for a cup of Bill Roffey. He said, listen, I'll get on the Brian LeBan and order a Neil McNabb. <laughs> so he gets on the Brian LeBan, orders a Neil McNabb, and they go back to the John Pratt. So when they get back to John Pratt, they go through the front door and he says, why don't you have a sit down on the Peter Bonetti? So she sits, that's my favourite, the Peter Bernay, my guy. The That's my favourite, the Peter Bernay. So why don't you have a sit down on the Peter Bernay? So she sits down on the Peter Bernay. He goes in the Peter kitchen, he comes out with two cups of Francis Lee. He puts them on the coffee table and sits, sits down next to the Pat Hurd. And he said to the Pat Hurd, he said, uh, why don't you come a bit, Alan Shearer? So she comes a bit, Alan Shearer. And he said to her, he said, uh, any chance of a Teddy Maybank? <laughs> <laughs> and the Pat Hurd said, oh, yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you a Teddy Maybank, no problem. And he, and he went, oh, this is Glenoddle. <laughs> this, is, this is a Glenoddle I'm going to Davy Puckett. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, listen, why don't we get in the Bobby Moore? So they're getting the Bobby Moore. <laughs> and... Uh, he just about to start and all that. And she said to him, uh, he said, are, are you on the Rick Eel? She said, no, no, I'm not on the Rick Eel. He said, you'll have to wear an Adrian Eighth. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So he, uh, he puts his hand down there. He went, he went, oh, he said, you've got a lovely Roger Hunt. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> and he puts his, and he puts his head down there. He said, but oh, Colin Bell's a bit down there. Don't <laughs> and she said, yeah, I've got a touch of Ian Rush. <laughs> That'll not get cut, will it? <laughs> oh. I, I just say that until I wick him out in the end. I think I got about eighty percent to them. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Top man, much mate. appreciated and good luck with yeah, all of us. Right, yeah. Thank you very much. No, no, pleasure. Cheers. Absolute pleasure. I hope it, uh, <laughs> I hope it went well. Yeah. Peter Benetti. <laughs> yeah, yeah.